So people of Pakistan voted on the 8th of February. And even one week later, no government is formed yet. There is still no clarity as to who finally will lead the country, which is in a dire need of some vision and rescue. Democracy on paper, military power behind the scenes. Now we have seen chaotic elections earlier also in Pakistan, but 2024 general polls were something else, like a thriller movie or a book. Twists and turns, crime, horror, suspense, surprise, anticipation, anxiety. Only this one was no fiction but reality. It did appear before the elections that Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz seemed a stronger faction and with military backing expected to win. But when the first trend started to roll, it was a shocker. PMLN found itself in a tight spot, even losing seats they thought were in the bag. There is a famous saying, never count your chickens before they hatch. And for Pakistan, that stands true. Imran Khan's party, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, PTI, initially scored big in the elections. When trends started to emerge, supporters immediately turned out on the streets with Imran Khan cut out posters and the celebration started because it did appear that he was winning this elections. But by the next morning, neither was his party leading nor was Imran Khan's future looking bright. While the trends and leads were still pouring in, internet gets snapped in parts of the country longer than usual delay in revealing the numbers and allegations of mass rigging. Initially, as per news reports, even cited on Pakistan Election Commission website that PTI was not only trending, but also won on most of the 101 out of 264 seats. But final trends had changed by the next day. PMLN was now winning with a massive margin and how? So here's what happened. PMLN and Pakistan People's Party, PPP of Bhutto Zardari, both which are heavyweight dynasties, realized that they are starting to lead. So they soon announced that they will team up and will now collectively steer this ship. You would think this sounds normal. If PMLN is likely winning and will form the government, then it's clear that Nawaz Sharif has returned to become the Prime Minister again. They can form an alliance and make the government. In Pakistan, civilian elections are not like in India. That you vote, counting and results come in, calculations are done, and based on the number game and political deliberations, one leader is elected. Quite simple if you look at it. And if you look at the contrast in the neighbour nation, where military is always in the background to decide the puppet leader, they want to establish on the throne. And then, according to the final results announced on Sunday, showed independence backed by PTI, basically also because PTI could not contest, winning 94 seats. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, PMLN winning 82. Pakistan People's Party, PPP securing 54. And the Mutahida Qaumi Movement, MQM, garnering 17. This is what is called a fractured mandate, not a clear majority. These independent candidates, many were handpicked by Imran Khan himself. They took the lead in the final counts, winning maximum seats. They could help PTI form the government in Pakistan. But, 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 they started to jump ship. Example, Wasim Qadir. He was a PTI-backed independent candidate who won the election from Lahore's NE121 constituency. After the victory, he soon jumped ship and joined the Nawaz Sharif-led PMLN and even declared in public, I have come home. This was interesting. Clearly, Imran Khan was not the chosen one by the Pakistan army. And though incarcerated, people appeared to have sent out a message that they will be advocating their choice and if required, are possibly ready to go against the military's choice as well. Soon the allegations emerged that there was election rigging taking place at a mass level. One candidate from the National Democratic Movement Party alleged that the presiding officers, other officials at his polling stations are openly stuffing ballot boxes. Something like that we may have heard decades ago in some states of the country but not anymore. Many viral videos like this on social media were noticed from Pakistan claiming 
that officials allegedly are punching Nawaz votes to make him win. So PTI was all out on social media claiming daylight robbery ho rahi hai yahan par and quoting for example the Lahore seat for Nawaz Sharif that is where Nawaz Sharif contested and won. PTI then claimed on social media via sharing some document and said that the total number of valid votes the votes that are counted were greater than the total number of votes that were even cast. How is that possible? So the party that was quick to organize celebrations on day one were now organizing street protests. Chaos on Sur in the streets of Pakistan with this up and down that was happening. The PTI spearheaded protests. People were on the roads blocking highway. One Yusuf Mio, who challenged the verdict of some of these seats, claimed that upon reaching the office of the returning officer, he was not even allowed to enter. Meher Bano Qureshi, a PTI-backed independent candidate, says that upon studying the Form 45, her victory was cleared. She even tweeted out the results on social media that had a margin of 5,995 votes. She claimed in the Form 45, the rejected votes from her seat are shown as 4,151. But in the Form 47, which is the final one issued by the Election Commission, the number had jumped to a whopping 16,555. Anyway, now that Nawaz Sharif's party had maximum votes, eventually PMLN decided as the largest party to stake claim. If you thought, well, it's fine, it's ended now. PMLN President Shehba Sharif announced that he requests Brother Nawaz Sharif to accept the position. But right then, former President Asif Zardari, husband of Benazir Bhutto, said that he wants the son, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari of PPP, to be made Prime Minister in exchange by forming a coalition with the PMLN in Punjab. Anyway, finally, the PMLN has now announced that not Nawaz Sharif, as was thought earlier, but Shehbaz Sharif is set for a second term as Pakistan's Prime Minister after his elder brother and three-time Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif has stepped aside from the race for the top job for now. Also because there is no clarity how this coalition government will work until how long. Remember that the world was watching, not just India. We are told, according to reports, US lawmakers have urged President Joe Biden not to acknowledge the election results in Pakistan until the allegations of rigging or fraud are fully investigated. This is as per reported by the GEO News. So just see what exactly happened across Pakistan in elections that should have reflected democracy on the ground. So as I conclude, remember, no prime minister has finished a whole five-year term in Pakistan since its formation in 1947. Not one prime minister. Most are either in exile, in jail or executed. Nearly 60 million voters, we are told, turned out. But will they get a stable, strong wazir azam One cannot be very sure about that for the neighbor nation. Thank you for watching.